live from the B-Movie Mania Boudoir. It's B-Movie Mania's special erotic thrillers episode. With your hosts, Mike Hayes and Paul Brooks. Tonight's steamy selection, Play Nice and Victim of Desire. Plus, your man on the street, JP, and me, I'm Tim Bavlinka. Now get nice and comfy. Here's Mike and Paul. What do you got in your hand there? There's a camera, I think, that we can use to do, like, I don't really know how to work it, but we do the, just do the best we can with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. See what happens. Oh, wait. Oh, Oh, hey. Yeah. Hi. Welcome to B-Movie Mania. I'm Mike Hayes. My name is Paul Brooks. We are getting sexy tonight. As you can tell, it's a very special, sexy episode of B-Movie Mania. Mike and I, you know, we just wanted to relax a little bit tonight. We wanted to just hang out in, the, in, in our bathtub, just relax, take a nice... Hot bath. bath. Oh, I'm loving it. How about you? Paul, I'll tell you what, what I'm liking the most. You're playing real nice. Oh, yeah. So, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. We wanted to just hang back and relax and put mm-hmm. on a couple sensual films. Mm. So sensual. And just sort of, you know... Get into it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell us what we got first on the agenda for tonight for Sexy Movie Night here on B Movie Mania. Well, Paul Diamond, first up, a little something called Play Nice. Ooh, I like to play nice. Where is it? Where is it at? It's over here somewhere. Well, I have my wine over here. Can I have a little sip of wine? Have a sip of wine. We got our nice bubble bath here. Look at that. Mmm. Let me let me read the back. Got some wine here. Read the back of Plana. Can I see the cover? Sure. Ooh, she's looking pretty good. You got some bubbles on the front. Yeah. <laughs> All right, read the back. From the producers of Nightmare on Elm Street. Weird way to start. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Play Nice is a psychosexual thriller that takes you into the dark world of twisted erotic obsessions and explores the same driving passions as Basic Instinct. Oh. So it's just... They're copying to like it's the same movie. Mm. Um, Mouth. What? <laughs> That's the guy's name. Do I get a partner? Well, that's going to be a problem, Mouth. Mouth. A tough-talking homicide detective is assigned to an impossible case involving a female serial killer. Uh Uh-huh. The killer brutally takes her lover's lives as the most climactic moment of sexual pleasure. I got a surprise. With the help of Jill Brooks, from the County Bureau of Records, Mouth uncovers a frightening and perverted link between the killer's victims. During the course of their investigation, Jill and Mouth passionately fall for each other. Their sexual relationship turns from hot to volcanic as the intensity of the case mounts. Finally, the killer pushes Mouth to the edge, leaving clues intended only for him. All the pieces fall into place. Like a raging bull, Mouth sets out as a bloody double-edged vendetta to take the killer all the way down. Come on, down the hall, down the hall, here. It's basically the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a guy named Mouth. Hey, Mouth. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. He's supposed to be like the leading guy, like kind of good looking leading guy. He's, he's not, not good looking. He's not good looking at all. <laughs> uh, Thanks. Thanks again. Goodbye, Jack. Thanks a lot. It's very nice to meet you. 
My pleasure. Lovely eyes. <laughs> Uh, but this girl in the movie uh, this that, that he's hanging out with totally falls for him. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. You, you could have asked me to do this over the phone. I guess I could have. Ah, uh, what, what to even say about this movie? It was fun to watch. I had a good time watching it. I don't, I don't know about yeah, you, but I no, had I fun. Did. I did. I, I was kind of hoping for more. What, it, what do you mean by that? It turned out to be more simplistic than it really was. Like, then it seemed like it would be. Like, I gave it more credit than it should have been. Oh, yeah. Yeah, plot-wise. Right. I thought, oh, there's no way it's going to be this simple, and then it turned out it kind of was that simple. Well, it doesn't help that on the back of the VHS tape, they kind of show exactly who the killer is. <laughs> yeah. And we're not going to show no. because that would be a spoiler. But it's the per- you, if you look, you know. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, Mike, what did you like about this film? Because it wasn't terrible by any means. We had no, fun watching it. we enjoyed it. watching it. I mean, well, it was terrible. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Hold on, you need some... Some water? You just need We're to get out of water. sexy. You just need to sexualize. Okay, this isn't... Part of this. We got this great bubble bath going on here, uh -huh. and Tim's gonna help us light some candles here. Anyway, very kind of him. We just need no. to, you know. This is not good. Go. The show. There you go. Okay, good. let's just. All right. Uh, what I liked about the show was the movie was how it's hard to say. It was I liked it was I liked that it was enjoyable to watch, but in a in an ironic kind of way. Uh -huh. It was very. Eh, stereotypical, kind of cliche-ish, but in a fun way. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of knew kind of what was going on. And well, even though you didn't want it to be that way, it kind of was. The thing is, they don't want you to know who the killer is. Mm -hmm. So, they try to mask who the killer is by doing things like putting this ridiculous blonde wig on her because... The killer's nickname is Rapunzel mm -hmm. because right. people, all people know about her is that she has really long blonde hair. They also found long strands of human hair bleached blonde at the two previous murder scenes. Must be a wig. Here we go. A little hair of the dog that bit him. Um, well, come on. I Just mean, keep talking. Shh. She has really long blonde hair, and she talks in a really weird voice. So as to mask the identity of the killer, she talks like, I, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. It's got a real RoboCop voice. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I'm doing this. But she's not a robot. It's dumb. It's real dumb. Don't you lose it. Don't you lose it. Oh. You lost. It gets a little weird towards the end when... I, I don't know if this is getting into spoiler territory or not, but... You know, he's... Basically, here's what I'll say. He'd figure... The, the main guy, our main guy, Mouse, figures out who the killer is, and he decides that he doesn't want to kill the killer. Mm -hmm. So he says, person who's the killer, I don't want to kill you. Jill, stop, I don't want to kill you. Good. His solution is to throw a box, like a big <laughs> tin of dishes at the person. Just who cares? The killer is um, the main girl. Yeah. Because there's no, uh, no one else. Who who else would it be? And that's the problem with the movie. Is that you think there's like was that you're like the whole movie? I was just was there someone else? Was there some who's it? Are they gonna find someone? It's gonna be this whole thing. They want you to think it's this woman, obviously, because she's in the limelight so much. Right. But it's obvious that they're not gonna be here. Guess what? It was her. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot of drama at the end of the day. Terribly right. kind of stupid. Yeah. You're a canad, little slut. But you're not stupid. 
art. <laughs> no, I guess I'm not. <laughs> Whatever, I had fun watching it. I love these sort of psychosexual thrillers. That's just kind of been my bag lately. It's I don't fun. know what it is. They're fun. Yeah. You know, there's some boobs in it. Um, they're nice. Mm hmm You like them? Yeah, there's some man in it too. He's not very nice. There's no man. There's no... Well, no, Keep no, no. But I'm saying there's just a man with his shirt off. Oh yeah, his yeah. butt. I think his butt comes out. It's not great. It's not great. It's just, he's not a good. He's not a good leading man. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> and if you're watching this in 1989 on on Cinemax, it's good. You should you you should watch it really if that's the sort of thing that you're in the mood for. Mm hmm Paul. Yeah. It's time for a little something I think we'd like to call. High point, low point. Oh. <clears throat> okay, let's do it. You want me to start? You start. I'll start with the low point. Okay. The low point of the movie is just sort of the beginning of the film. Because you're wanting to get sort of sexy. You're wanting to sort of get, you know, really into... Um, the boobs and the cool, you know, saxophone and things like that. And at the beginning, can you stop touching my toes so much? Nope. At the beginning, it's like, just sort of like, well, there's a there's some things that happen, and we're not quite sure what to do about it, and there's, it's not very sexy. Forensics found rope fibers on the sheets of the scene of the first murder. Did they find any on the second? Nope. It says right here, no fibers found on the sheets. I enjoyed this movie, but for the first, like, half hour really took me a while to sort of get into it. Sure, I agree with that. Okay. Do you remember what the high point is? For no. you? No. Tell me what the high point is for me, Paul. The high point, and we can edit this if you want Please to. Please do. What is the high point, point is, oh crap, I hope that guy doesn't come in. Oh, it's, what's his name? What's mouth. his name? Remember the, the main, no, not mouth. Mouth has to hide under the desk because the boss comes in. And the partner, the main boss guy, he's like, oh, remember? He comes in. The main boss guy? No, his, the, the chief, the police chief. The police chief. I don't remember his name. The chief. Ah, uh, if I had my phone, or I saw my laptop, f me. Why do I take notes if I don't go get my? Just notes? ask me what the high point is. Mike, what would you say is the high point of the movie? Uh, the high point is definitely like the, one of like coming up to the climactic scene. The the main guy Mouth is sleeping with the killer. He doesn't know it's the killer, but he's sleeping with this woman. Is this your little girl's room? <laughs> yeah. The police chief like, like knocks on the door and it's basically like... The police chief comes in suddenly. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't knock on the door. I'm sorry, he doesn't. Does he just come in? Yeah, he just comes in because they're like, oh, if he doesn't come in, I hope he doesn't come in. So he, they're talking... No, they're in the, the police door. station. And they're like, we'll get caught doing this. What are they doing? They're looking up evidence. Do you remember what I'm talking about? No, I, I fell asleep for like the last half hour. <laughs> I went to bed. <sighs> but I, I called who the, the killer was. It's perfect because they're at the police station and then the police chief comes in and it's like the absolute like worst thing that could happen. And it was fantastic. He has to hide under a desk. He's like, and the police chief's walking around and he's just hiding. It's, it's, it's pretty good. If you talk to Mouth, be sure he stays out of this. Tell him to think about what I told him. You got that? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure he's thinking about it right now. Well, I had a lot of fun with Play Nice, Mike. I hope you did, too. I felt pretty, you know, I mean, there was a little bit of a turn on. There was some cool stuff going. It made me feel sort of like...
know what I mean? Yeah, I would say it made me feel like... Yeah. So what do you rate it? I rate it... Two grasping hands. Where? Right here. <laughs> Danger dangerously close. Move them down a little bit. Oh, they're good. Okay, that's it? Yep, what do you do? I give... I give it one hand and five fingers from my throat all the way down. Okay, so anyway, uh, we've really enjoyed this movie. Thanks for watching this part. Let's throw it out to our uh, good friend JP out on the street. JP, what's happening? Guys, that movie sounds great. However, I've got something truly special today. Uh, it's a movie that I think is going to retrieve some feelings from within you like it has me. It's, it's Air Bud World Pup. Um, it's a family film, and you know, I used to watch it uh, with my childhood sweetheart, and I'm actually out in front of her house right now. Um, this movie has everything, special effects. You know, we really used to love this movie, and I'm, I'm here today hoping, um, you know, I'll be able to meet up with her and, and, and we can watch it together. You know, it, it's, been, it's been a long time. Uh, it's been so long since I've seen her, and uh, it. JP, is that you? Um, I didn't know you were gonna be home. Uh, I can come back another time. No, come on in. We have so much to catch up on. It's been forever. No. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. I, I'll come back. I'll come back. Uh, oh, and that's warming up, warming up. JP, thanks for that. JP, appreciate it, buddy. Really appreciate that. Good stuff for you. Go hot, hot. Hey, Paul, while it's spelling, you mind uh, topping off these glasses of wine? Uh, we're drinking some wine. We poured, uh, you poured it. I don't know what it is. Uh, no, Tim, actually, Tim, yeah, it'll be better. Tim, can you take care of this, please? Yeah. More Just wine, please. A bit. More wine. Uh, I hope this gets a credit. Tim, just let that flow, baby. No, we'll give you a wine credit. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. More. Ah, okay, let's go. Oh, it's cold. Well, Paul, cheers. Oh, cheers. Thank you, Sam. To the sexy episode of uh, B Movie Mania. Up next, thanks for coming back, by the way. Thanks for hanging out with us here on B Movie Mania. Up next, we have a film that is very sexy and for you guys looking at us over here on this camera it's still very sexy you can see it right here it's called victim of desire <laughs> which is a great title and as you can see by the cover it has a very very sexy Julie Strain on the cover, who is one of my personal favorites. Mike, tell us about this film. No, wait, you read the yeah, last one. Why don't one. you read this one, buddy? I will. I just don't want to get it wet. Here, it's, this hand's not as wet. Fine. All right. Victim of Desire, here we go. Investigator Pete Starkey. Hi, uh, Starkey. Peter Starkey. Is hot on the trail of $70 million in embezzled cash. The trail leads to Leland Duvall, a wealthy white collar killer. M Mr. Duvall? Yes. But when Duvall dies in a mysterious car accident. <laughs> the victim's sexy wife, Carla, becomes the prime suspect. Isn't that what this is all about? Did I or didn't I kill my husband for $70 million? Did you? Just as Starkey 
scores romantically. Uh, it's like the back is kind of messed up, so it's hard yeah, to read. Yeah, you're, I'm not you're good at reading. It's fine. I'm not dumb. Yeah. Becomes, uh, he, Starkey... Be, uh, becomes romantically involved with Carla. Evidence points to him as her accomplice in the murder. Is he innocent or just a victim of desire? Victim of desire is a twisted erotic thriller in the tradition of Sea of Love and the Body Chemistry series. Peep game on Julie Strain right here. Hello. Hello. Paul's into it. Paul is into it. Paul? Yo. If I may ask. Please do. Who do you prefer? Julie Strain or Shannon Tweed? I Julie Strain all the way. Yeah, we got that. You like Shannon Tweed, don't you? I'm a tweeter. Okay, hey, nothing wrong with that. They're both beautiful. They're both <laughs> probably okay. <laughs> the wax burned me. What happened? I got wax all down my arm. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is dangerous. Kind of sexy, though. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I felt good. Yeah, you like that? I loved it. Ah. If I were you, I'd take a couple of Valium. Relax. Let me give you a massage. Let's work that tenseness right out of your body. Anyway. So Julie Strain's in this movie, Shannon Tweed's in this movie, which is like the Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair of sexy Cinemax movies. Amazing. Also, this film was directed by Jim Wynerski, who is like the king of B-movies, if you didn't know. Cheers, Jim. We were talking about how this movie really, when you watch it for what it is, is not like the, the acting's pretty good. There's some mm -hmm. good stuff going on mm -hmm. with it. Did you like it? I, I liked the movie a lot, actually. Yeah. Uh, it was, the the acting isn't bad. Um, the production's not great, certainly. Like, it's, you know. A small budget. Yeah, absolutely. But I'll tell you what, Paul. Yeah. If they remade this movie... Yeah. This day, the plot's pretty good. It's got a lot of good twists and turns. Now here's what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna take that body and we're gonna put it in Jordan's condo. Then we're going to shoot him and kill him with his own gun. Then I'm gonna take his medic alert bracelet and put it in his hand. I think it's fun. You know, I, I enjoyed bracelet. it. Jim Winerski, for uh, those who are uh, not familiar with his work, he's done literally hundreds of movies and this is a perfect example of his sort of style of filmmaking where basically there needs to be boobs every 12 minutes or so in the movie. So you will see... Th Stop touching. I can't! I'm too... You sit too I'm short. I'm going to stretch out then. Okay, fine. You see things in this movie where you're like, there's boobs, a lot, there's a lot of boobs. Should I just do it too? Should I just... Well, do you want me to... Would it make more sense for you to go... Hold on, you... Once you get on top. Uh, would yeah. that make more sense? Is, are you comfortable? Not... Hold on, let me get situated. Just, just sit on me. Just... I just don't want to burn don't my... knock my glass over. Alright. Alright. So basically, there's you a lot it? of boobs, yeah. There's a lot of boobs, and you see the boobs, you know, like every 12 minutes, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's good, you know, it's a, it's a fun movie to watch, and it's sexy, it's erotic, you know, it's thrilling. And Mike, there's a lot of twists and turns in this movie that was generally sort of like, whoa, where's this, where's this going to go, you know? I think the main twist and turn that you get is the main uh, detective is a gentleman who uh, uh, ends up falling for the main suspects, the prime suspects, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, like, they sleep together a lot, and that's a no-no. You don't... You can't do that. You don't sex where you sleep, right? right. Is that the word? Something like that. <laughs> um, but basically, that happens, and that puts him in a very vulnerable situation where he, you know, you're worried he's going to get caught, 
and it will look like he's been aiding the suspect. And yeah. you don't you don't know if he has or not. You don't know. That's the thing is you expect he's a good guy because he's a detective. But you're not sure. He could have been aiding her. There's certainly plenty of loopholes that he could have been doing that. We should talk about who's in this movie because Kevin Bacon is in this movie. No, it's not Kevin Bacon. Put it back on me. Artie Lang is in this movie. Artie Lang is not in this movie. It's there. I feel it. That brought Ice to husband, and if we follow her sooner or later, she'll lead us to the evidence. And you know, I picked up his appointment book. Maybe we could find out where he was going the night of the murder. They're both in this film, and they no, do good. No, they're not in they this do, film. They do a good, they do a good job in this film. Consider me your partner. Partner? Of course. Michael. They're not in this movie, but the actors do do a good job. The guy who Get looks like Artie Lang is a great my leg. Why what am you, I supposed to do with my hand? Why are you? Like cusping my leg. Because your leg is on my chest. Like, why aren't you drinking your wine? Because I can't get to it because your foot's in the way. Jesus. Mother of everything. I need you to move your leg because I'm going to put my foot on your crotch. You know what I wish? I wish we could have all the power and money without these men. <laughs> we can. Paul. That's much more comfortable, thank you. I yeah, me too. It. I feel much better about this. Whew. Anyway, Paul, for you, tell me what was the high point in this movie. Wow, 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 wow. Um, you know, here's the thing. I have to make a complaint to Jim Winerski, the director of the film, that Julie Strain was not in this film enough. So I'm going to go with Julie's one nude scene, which we really can't show right now. That was the high point of the film. She leaves for B B Bimini. Bimini? Yeah. I'm trusting you, Linda. Yes, lover. By Friday, we'll be in Bimini. You got it. She leaves for a place called she leaves for a place called Bimini, which we didn't know what Bimini was. Turns out it's in the Bahamas. If you think Jordan and I killed Leland for seventy million dollars, then why am I standing here answering questions for you? And him and that bimbo are off in Bimini somewhere. So she takes off for like the last half of the movie. So guys, really, the the truth is you only have to watch the first half of this movie. And All right. Watch. Anyway, <laughs> Shannon tweets perfectly fine, aka better. Right, Tim. I blame the 90s. <laughs> anyway. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> no, you did not. No, you did not fart. <laughs> get your leg off of me. Get off of me. Finish. Go. Say what you have to say. <laughs> Paul, the low point was when I farted in the top. <laughs> that wasn't in the movie. <laughs> it is now. Just um, say, just talk. Paul, Hurry. What would you rate this movie? It was like five stars or what five hands or whatever. <laughs> I'd give it one hand because it's all I have. Hold on, back up. I gotta what? think about this. Hurry. Uh, I can't think. Four fingers. Four fingers? I give it two hands. Imagine there's two, but I'm holding the camera right now. So I give it. It was fun. It was great. I liked it a lot. Can I pour Watch this, it again. Can I pour this wine on you like no. in, in um, Wild Things? No. Mm. <laughs> Do you feel sexy now? No! Oh, I feel violated. Um, well, thanks for it. Hey, thanks for farting in the tub. <laughs> God, what was that? Fee movie mania! No. <laughs> uh.